There are six Giga Coasters in the world, and no, I'm not counting Red Force, especially not for this video. These are coasters that have drops over 300 feet off a lift hill. The first one opening in 2000, and the most recent one opening this summer. But how do they stack up to one another? Let's examine all six coasters by their prime ride time and compare how their layouts affect their pacing. These are the world's Giga Coasters, by the numbers. One thing to remember about the Giga Coasters is that they are all long, epic rides that were built to be the most expensive and standout attractions at their parks, so you're not going to see a short ride. For this reason, instead of ranking these by prime ride time, I'm going to rank them by pacing. I think this is a better indicator of the quality of the ride experience, at least for these types of rides. So that being said, the actual feet covered per second is not an accurate number because I can't calculate exactly how much track makes up the lift hill, the brake run, and the station. So I will not be providing a pacing number. But assuming that each ride has about the same amount of track on their lift, their brake run, and station, they cancel each other out. So I can accurately compare the pacing figures to each other. I also won't be talking about their height or their speed because they all fall between the 300 and 320 feet range and also the 90 to 95 mile per hour range. So the differences are pretty insignificant. That was a long explanation for something that's not that complicated. So before I lose everyone, let's get started. Coming in sixth place with the worst pacing is Steel Dragon 2000 at Nagashima Spa Land. This has by far the longest amount of prime ride time at 85 seconds, which is probably up there with the best prime ride time of any coaster period. One minute and 25 seconds from lift to brakes is insane. Steel Dragon is also the longest coaster in the world and is about 1500 feet longer than the next longest giga on this list. It features some massive hills at over 200 feet after the first drop, as well as a mid-course brake run, which will slow down the train for the final run of airtime hills. Focusing on those big 200 foot drops is going to slow down the train. It also seems like it loses a lot of speed before the mid-course breaks as it winds through the structure after those big swooping turns. We're going to use Steel Dragon as the baseline for pacing, but for the sake of context, the best paced RMC is Zadra, and that's about 1 foot per second slower than Steel Dragon. The best paced Intamin Prefab is El Toro, and that's 6 feet per second slower than Steel Dragon. And the best paced GCI is Wodan, and Steel Dragon beats that by about 15 feet per second. So even the worst pace Giga tops the other list that I've already covered. At fifth place, covering about six feet more per second than Steel Dragon is Millennium Force at Cedar Point. This was the original, holding the record for the tallest coaster before Steel Dragon took it away a few months later. Millennium Force has over 1,500 feet of track less than Steel Dragon, and it features 20 fewer seconds of prime ride time still topping out at over a minute, at 65 seconds. I've ridden Millennium Force a lot over the years, and my favorite part of the ride is the speed. It's remarkable how much speed this thing still has going into the final speed hill and into the final overbank, after covering nearly 6,600 feet of track. The pacing is hurt a bit by the two side-by-side -side airtime hills. A lot of people complain that these don't have any airtime, and that's because it's not going all that fast over those hills. The train also rises up into those overbanks, and that'll also hurt its pacing. But it is helped by not having any trims or a mid-course brake run. So even though this is a speed machine, the other gigas cover ground a little more efficiently. At fourth place, covering one more foot per second than Millennium Force, is Orion at Kings Island. From the oldest to the newest, this is the first of three B&Ms. It's the third shortest in duration, at 52 seconds, and the second shortest in length, barely clearing one mile of track. This doesn't exactly stay low to the ground. It loses its speed at a couple points, starting with that reverse treble clef that serves as the main turnaround, and then the big camelback that also features a trim brake. I have not had the pleasure of riding Orion because it just opened in July, so I can't speak to the ride experience, but it's in the lower half of the pack in pacing, length, and duration. And for what it's worth, it's also at the bottom in height and speed. So stat-wise, it's not impressive. But like I always say, it's all about the layout. And that plays the biggest role in if the ride is good or not. At third place, covering two more feet per second than Orion, is Fury 325 at Carowinds. Fury is the tallest and the fastest of the bunch, and it ranks second in length at 6,602 feet. 
just 7 feet longer than Millennium Force, but more than 1500 feet shorter than the top dog, Steel Dragon. It does have two fewer seconds of ride time than Millennium Force, at 63 seconds, but you can see that the duration and the length are very similar with Millennium Force, so these can be compared pretty accurately. Just like Millennium Force, Fury has moments where the train is absolutely flying, and also moments where the train slows down. For Fury, the slowdown comes at the top of the treble clef, and the helix that follows the first airtime hill. That hill also has a trim, and that hits every time that I've ridden it, so that does not help keep the speed either. But Fury has so much speed at the beginning, staying low to the ground for the most part, especially with those bank turns right before the treble clef. It has enough speed to make those last two airtime hills really pop with some great ejector moments. I have ridden this the most out of all the coasters on this list, and it's my favorite of the bunch. Fury has a world-class layout, and that's backed up by above average pacing and ride duration. In second place, covering three more feet per second than Fury, is Leviathan at Canada's Wonderland. This is a little surprising, because even though it starts like Fury with the big turn after the drop and the big high turnaround, it features two very large camelbacks that Fury doesn't have. Fury stays low to the ground before the turnaround, so it rips through the course. But where Fury slows down at the end of the course, from the helix to the final two airtime hills, Leviathan just ends. It has over 1100 feet less of track and 12 fewer seconds of ride time than Fury. Still, a little surprising that despite those big camelbacks, Leviathan covers ground faster than Fury. Finally, in first place, covering 11 feet per second more than Leviathan is Intimidator 305. No surprise here, this coaster thrives with its low to the ground elements. The only thing slowing it down is that giant hill under the lift and the trim break on the hill shortly before the finale, but it rips through the course. This has by far the best pacing of any coaster that I've looked at so far, and I would be surprised if any coaster out there beats it. It's the shortest giga in length and duration, with 5100 feet and 43 seconds. But the fact that it covers 23 more feet per second than Steel Dragon, and 11 more feet per second than its next closest competitor, Leviathan, is amazing. So here's how the coasters rank up in terms of duration and pacing. You can see the lists are basically inverted, with the exception of Orion and Fury being flipped. I think the most impressive thing here is that even though Fury covers 6,602 feet of track, its pacing is still right in the middle of Orion and Leviathan, despite having around 1,200 more feet of track. And Millennium Force is not too far off the mark either. Orion and Leviathan are very similar in stats, but Leviathan does have superior pacing at about 5 more feet per second. And ultimately, I-305 is the breakneck intensity machine that we all thought it was. That's all I have for this installment of Prime Ride Time. Let me know in the comments if any of the stats were surprising to you. And also, which of these gigas are your favorite? If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like. That's the best way to show your support for the channel. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.